Hi everyone, welcome to the channel. It's review time today and for my first SBFBO9 review I'm taking a look at Daughter of the Beast by EC Greaves. So for those who missed it, I'm reviewing for SPFB09 again as part of Team Bookborn. I've got six titles that are in my allocation and I'll be judging these for phase one of the competition and putting forward a semi-finalist from those six that Bookborn will then read along with the other semi-finalists from our group as she considers her finalist. If you want to check out all of the titles that I'm going to be reading for phase one of the competition, I'll link the introductory video that I did in the cards in the top corner. For today though, I'm taking a look at book one of the Vyshivka trilogy, which is Daughter of the Beast by E.C. Greaves. So this is billed as being steeped in Slavic myth and appealing to adult and young adult readers. And I think that's a pretty good place to start because although some of the themes are what you would generally tend to find in a young adult book, I personally would say that this is written for an adult audience while also being accessible to the young adult market rather than being specifically a young adult title. And elements from Slavic myth and folklore are definitely visible throughout the entirety of this book. And it was one of the real highlights for me. I don't think there was a single human character or even a human who was mentioned in this book. Instead, all the characters are from known but maybe lesser species, ones that you don't generally tend to see so much, especially as main characters in a fantasy novel. So it really stands out. It's really different and refreshing to see that. The story is told from the first person perspective of Zintel Fairwinter, a young Kikimura or Kimura as they're generally known in this world. When the monstrous Volkari raid her village she's taken prisoner and is basically indoctrinated into the culture of these strange wolf-like women. From there she learns about the Sakari legion of hobgoblins and about the threat posed by the mysterious merchant combine. Now the book starts off at a pretty fast pace, it's split up into six different parts or stitches as they're called because the series title Vyshivka translates to embroidery and it does play a part, there are continuing themes of embroidery uh, throughout this story and throughout the Volkari culture. But I would say the entire first stitch of this book is a collection of short sharp chapters detailing Zintel's capture and an attempted escape. There's no real time for scene setting among this, although we do learn a fair amount through the eyes of Zintel and through the knowledge that's given to her by the kick-ass gnome who she's trying to escape with. Now given that Zintel is only 10 summers old at the start of the book, I like the way that this is handled. She hasn't been able to experience the world outside of her village, so as we're seeing things for the first time, so is she, and we're able to learn as much as we need to know in the moment. The pace does slow down a bit after that first stitch, allowing us the opportunity to explore the world that Zintel finds herself in, and I like the way that this gives a nice balance to those frenetic opening chapters. The whole book takes place over the course of several years, so we're able to see Zintel grow into a young Kimori woman. We see her grow close to her captors, and as she becomes a raider herself, those who raid with her become her sisters. This kinship is quite interesting to see develop, and although it's slightly abbreviated by the swift passage of time at various points early on in the book, I like how we get to see the initial animosity gradually turn into acceptance and eventually trust and friendship. The interaction between Zintel and her sisters is another one of the highlights of the book for me. I like the bond that they form and how it doesn't seem forced. I like the, uh, the differences that are always apparent between them but don't cause a problem, with the sisters using each other's strengths to offset their weaknesses. And I just like some of the little things that you see between them as well, such as the continued use of horse, son, that stems from an initial misunderstanding, because of course it's not a sausage path, horse's son. Outside of all of that, the world building is solid and very interesting. I would say it's light on the magic, although there are elements of a mystical with strange visions and there's also the threat of an eldritch horror potentially in later books in the series. I said that this book is steeped in Slavic myth and there are plenty of strange creatures that you might recognise from various places. Again, I don't think there's a single human in this world. Instead, it's filled with Kimori and the Volkari. You've got gnomes and you've then got hobgoblins, or as they're known in their own tongue, the Domovoy of myth. There's also things like the Vodnik to look out for as we continue to explore this world. This exploration allows us to see the different culture of some of these creatures as well, primarily the hobgoblins, and of course the matriarchal society of the Volkari. There's also then the wondrous city of Azure, which is a real eye-opener for our young characters. 
So it's a really interesting world that I think was very well put together. For me, I would say it's a very accessible setting with no prior knowledge required before you dive into it. Everything you need is given to you on the page, although I think it does manage to avoid the sometimes dreaded info dump in doing that. There's plenty of action here with various raids and skirmishes and sieges. There's also some intrigue to be found with, I would say, some light politicking, and there's plenty of heart. I think all of the main elements that I look for in a fantasy novel were really well done here with interesting characters, a great setting, good story building, and nicely balanced pacing throughout. Overall, this is a definite recommendation for anyone looking for something just a little bit different. For those who love epic fantasy like I do, I'm sure you'll also have a really good time here as well with Daughter of the Beast. And the happy news is, if you do enjoy it, it is part of a completed trilogy, so you can continue to book two and book three at your own pace. So for those who are more familiar with my regular reviews, my SPFPO reviews are going to be slightly different again this year because I'm not going to include either a star rating or my weighted rating score at the end of a review. I will update the star ratings on my Goodreads reviews once I've read all of the books in my allocation and announced the book that I'm putting forward as my semi-finalist. As far as Daughter of the Beast goes, I had a really good time with this one, so it's definitely in contention for that semi-final spot, and we'll find out more about that over the next couple of months as I move through my allocation. That's everything for today's review though. I hope that if you were on the fence about this title, I've maybe helped to push you over it, because as I say, I definitely recommend checking this one out, and I hope that if you do, you enjoy it as well. If you're one of the people who've picked this one up early, let me know in the comments down below what you thought of it. I'll hopefully see you in the next video sometime soon, but until then, as always, take care of yourselves, read some good books. Bye for now.